Hello and welcome to week 15 of the Quilter's Placation Adventure Sew Along Rainbow Edition. I've got to say I'm trying real hard not to use the hands. It's like a conscious effort to not like, woo, <laughs> like I always do. I am your host this week as I am every week, Cheryl Arkison. You are joining me on the 2024 version of the Quilter's Placation Adventure Sew Along the Rainbow Edition. We are on the start of the third row. If you're making your quilt in rows and making it as you go, as I am, I know there's some of you who aren't. Not everyone's going to make every block. That's fine. Um, we got a good one today. Needed to go back to that background. Here's our block. I'm going to bring her closer so that you can see. Pretty straightforward. I'd actually initially sketch it out a totally different way and then realized as I was making this block, there's a much easier way to do it. And you know me, I got to go for the easy stuff. So we're going to go ahead and make this block in the pastel version. We're going to make it live today. I am coming to you from sun trying to peek out Calgary where it snowed last night and this morning because we're just never done, never done whatsoever. Snow it is, not quite spring yet. Did see some crocuses up yesterday and some tulips. Not quite ready to bloom, but coming up yesterday on my walk, but today, snow. It's all right, it was a nice quiet morning walk. Got to take advantage of things as they exist, right? So we are here, week 15, let's get sewing. Bring you over here. We'll flip you around. Just say hello to the ladies and that mess of fabric. That's my e-bond fabric that I am playing with. And that looks like a good setup today. Tiny bit of a zoom in. So what do we need for today's block? Well, we're going to assemble it in two rows just to show you this. Here, we've got two rows. A couple of design decisions you can make now or later is whether you want these rows to be equal and thus this being dividing line in half. So that's one decision you make because that's gonna determine how wide you cut your pieces. I'm gonna go with half and half just because, but you don't have to, um, at least, yeah, probably just half and half. So if you have a strip already that you can use, I just cut this off of my big piece of fabric. What you want is um, more than half. You need to give yourself some wiggle room in this strip. So if half of your block, in this case, these are nine and a half inch blocks. Um, so half of that is going to be five inches, right? Because we have to account for seam allowance in there. So I cut this like five and a quarter. Just a little bit extra wiggle room. This one, um, for my larger block, I need six inches for my half. Is that what it is? No, I need five and a half. Anyways, I've got extra here. Suddenly can't remember. Yeah, I've got like six and a bit um, here. So if you're going to make them different sizes, you would need one wider strip and then one narrower strip and then the other design decision is kind of what order you're going to have your rainbow in because i make these strips for me um i think in the western world it would be pretty typical for a lot of us we would go left to right as we're sewing this strip so you've got to decide what kind of order you want your rainbow in if you even want it in an order at all that's entirely up to you um, in that so i kind of went you know, backwards, you know, from right to left for my rainbow, which meant I had to position this piece first as I went that way. Also, another design decision is, are your points going to all point up or are some going to point down? Um, it really doesn't matter. It's entirely up to you, but just factor that in as you place which piece goes next. Now, if you change your mind partway through, you change your mind part way through, you'll make it work. Don't worry. Don't worry at all. 
So I think for this one, I'm going to just lay out my blocks in the order that I want it to be. So I'm going to go pink, orange, yellow, and then I'm going to kind of loop around. So green, blue, purple, right? So these are going to be my points. I'm only going to work one row at a time. So I'll set these aside and I'm going to get my strip of background it's folded up. I don't want it. I only want one side. Okay. So we've got that. The basic technique that we're going to do for this whole thing is we're going to layer our fabrics right sides up and we're going to cut them right sides up, cut them together so that angle is the same, right? Just like that. You can vary the angle as you go. This little bit here, that's being discarded as a scrap. So now that I have this, these are the two pieces I want to sew together. So I'm going to, I cut right sides up so the angles together. I'm just going to flip that over and sew this seam right sides together. Pretty straightforward. So there is our first one. Now let's talk pressing. You can absolutely press towards your rainbow fabric. Just know that you're going to have a little bit of bulk when you have that cross seam here, um, which isn't a problem. It just adds a bit of a challenge when it comes to pressing and having your block laying nicely. Um, so if you don't want to deal with that, do what I'm doing and we're going to press toward the background. So now we're going to lay that on there. You'll notice I didn't move this strip at all. Just leaving it where it is until I need to. Right? So I'm going to lay these on top of each other. If your background is a solid, you can do this handy little trick. Actually, just wait. I'll show it to you afterwards. We're going to lay this on top and you're going to see I'm going to have this whole triangle that's going to be cut um, and left over because I'm going to go like this and cut here. I'm just checking to make sure that I've got fabric here. If I'd moved that over right, I would have this gap there and I don't want that. So I've got to make sure I have that point. I don't want to have my point right at the very end because then when this block gets sewn into something, that's going to get trimmed off and I won't have a point and kind of want a point in all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this right on that angle, which is going to leave me just to show you this leftover triangle. If you don't have a directional print that can be used on the other side, if you want, or just reserve it for another month and maybe we'll use them then. You know me, I'll probably figure something out. But if you have a solid fabric, it's the same on both sides, right? So you could just take this and flip it over like that. So this is the back of the fabric, but if it was solid, I could just go ahead and use that and I'm going to have less scraps left at the end. Not waste, just scraps. So let me go ahead and get that ruler where I'm going. I don't care that my angles are not exactly the same. It all works. So now I want to flip this piece over to here. There's that scrap. Just leave it aside. I'm sure I'll come up with something for it. And we're going to go ahead and sew this seam. And then we're going to repeat that. whole block just becomes a repeat of that process. We'll make one row and then the other in there. So I'm going to go ahead and press that. Remember I'm pressing out, meaning away from my rainbow fabric towards my background, but you can press the other way. So there I have my first one, right? 
pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to do the second one. So I'm going to lay that fabric on top. I'm going to decide where I want to put this. I want to have it relatively close because I've got kind of wide fabric and you know depending on how big I get I don't want to make this longer than I need. Oh doesn't that look cool? Wouldn't it be neat to do shapes? Oh that's going to have to be another block. Just gave myself an idea folks. Would look like grade two geometry. Right so I've cut that and I'm sewing it there. Do you have to worry about everything lining up at the bottom? No, because it's going to get trimmed. But I'm also, you know, what's the word? I'm not going to go crazy and have it super wonky at the bottom because then I have to trim off a lot, right? I don't want to trim off a lot. So there's that second one. I'm just going to give it a press. It doesn't have to be a straight line because we will be trimming, but I want to minimize as well any kind of ways. So I just want to show you here. So we cut that, right? And I actually cut these very close um, in there. So I have some overlap. Remember when I was talking about pressing and if you press to the point here, you're going to have a bit of bulk. That's exactly what's happened here because I've given myself a point there. So it just means that you have, you know, this fold and that fold on top of each other. So there's just more bulk. So you're just going to have to make sure you're pressing really well. So now I'm going to put that on top. I'm going to make sure I have, see, so I'm going to end up trimming a fair amount so I can change my angle on this which is I think exactly what I'm going to do but I want to make sure I'm up good up there there we go I'm going to go ahead and sew that seam So you'll get the idea that you're going to see me do it six times. Unfortunately, when you're live, you can't do that little speed up thing <laughs> with the camera, right? Or we can just sort of time lapse it fast ahead. And I did not pre-make one of these rows, which is fine. You just get to hang out with me this whole time, right? There are worse things in life, hey? Okay, third one for this row. So now... Before I go and cut this one, I do want to check where I am on my width. I know I'm going to need 10 and a half inches wide, right? So this gives me an idea. This is 10 and a half inches right here. So I'm obviously not going to use all of this, um, but that's fine. It will get trimmed off with the next one. I need to make this one a little more skinny and vertical so we can play with that and adjust exactly what's going to happen there I'm not showing you the sewing because it's just short straight seams nothing very exciting as usual the machine is set up like you would for any other piecing Right, a two or two and a half inch stitch length. I like to have mine set so the needle stops in the down position every time, but you may be different. You might like your needle lift. Go with what works for you. Improv is like cursive handwriting. I can show you the basics, but how you execute it is going to be entirely up to you. Okay, so again, gonna check that size. So if I have the ruler, let's say here, well, gotta go there, right? That's where I'm gonna be. I've got more than enough room. I just don't wanna be short. If you're short, you just add another strip of background. It's not a big deal, um, but I just wanted to make sure. 
And that's also why I just keep this strip long because then I have my wiggle room for, for where I trim this, right? So we'll sew this last piece and then we'll do a press and we'll actually cut this one to size. So now my brain actually has to do the math. So if I have a 10 and a half inch block and I need that in two even pieces, right? 10 and a half inches divided by two is 5.75, but I got to have my seam allowances there. So I need six inches because I only need the seam allowance on one side that I'm worrying about, if that made sense, right? So I just got my bigger ruler out. So what did I say? If I cut five and a half inch blocks, when I sew them together, that's going to give me five. I'm going to lose a quarter on either side. Yeah. So there we go. So now I can play because I have given myself a little bit of wiggle room. I can play with how far up and how wide. So I could make these points a little bit shorter because I can cut it, you know, off at the bottom or I can make them taller and quite close. I'm going to go the uh, shorter route and go like that. Apologies, my dog has decided to come in here and chew on a bone. So if you can hear that, that's what you're hearing, is the dog chewing on a bone. There we go. And don't worry, if you make a mistake on a math, you can always add or subtract to get to where you want to go. Right? So there's my first row. Now I'm going to repeat the process. I know what order I wanted these in. Purple first because I'm working from left to right. So that's where I'm going to go. I just don't need that big ruler for this. So let's go here and make that cut. Anybody wanting a puppy update? I think we're a little bit into the teenage years. He was very much a good listener and he's horrible this morning on our walk, not listening to me at all. He's definitely a winter dog, so he may have just been excited by the snow. I don't know, but he was being super annoying and not listening today. <laughs> Not at all. So if he's still in here at the end, I will show him to you. I will not pick him up because he weighs over 50 pounds now. And I don't need to do that. Bless you, dog. He just sneezed. So there we go. Just repeat the process. Make sure we're good everywhere. And we will go. If your strip isn't long enough and you run out, you just cut another piece or you can use one of your triangles, right? I could absolutely use one of my triangles at this point um, instead of using the strip. It's just that I have the strip, so I'm using it. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Hey, Elmer. As he just ignores me walking out of the room. But at least we don't have to listen to the bone anymore unless he comes back in. So you may not get a puppy update if he doesn't come back in. <laughs> All right. Blue now. So you can see we're just building it as we go. Make this one a little bit taller. It's really fun to kind of play with the angles and, and change it up so you have some variety. In what's going on. 
just makes it more interesting to look at at the end of the day. done almost we have one two three more well then four more seams three more seams to finish this row and then we'll get that last one done so. if you're wondering why I didn't flip back and check as I can see the shadow so I could tell I was okay on that now, obviously, your triangles are also going to be determined not just by the um, angle that you cut, but the size of the piece you start with. So, for example, I've cut kind of more squat pieces for this row, so they're, the triangles are not going to be as tall because the pieces were kind of more squarish than sort of tall, skinny things. And you could obviously put more in, um, in there. Michelle's asked, do you have a particular inspiration for this block? No, <laughs> sometimes there is, sometimes it's not. It's kind of, we could call it, you know, well, just when I see the three, three sisters, which is a mountain, um, in Canmore, not far from here, Michelle would know it. Um, but there's going to be six in this. So I don't know that that's a great influence for us, but I will think. So again, I'm just checking my width. Obviously I'm gonna be big enough, but how big is, is what I wanna see. So we'll go with peaks as the inspiration. I do love my mountains, but we can't quite call her three sisters because there's six peaks, not three. The dog decided to come back. Probably just went upstairs for a drink and then came back because, you know, that's how he rolls. Alrighty. Okay, let's get this last seam of this row together. Again, I'm going to lay it on top. I'm going to check. Okay, so if I cut there, how long is this gonna be? That's gonna be like 11 and a half inches. I'll have wiggle room, so we're good. And I'm gonna go a little bit more pointed, because again, there we go. Oh, now the dog's gonna whine. What did he do? You're fine, Elmer. He does like to hang out in the sewing room, but I do have to be careful because he is a chewer when left alone and he's eaten a couple of spools of thread. So, oh, surprised by color says there is another three sisters in Australia. So the name could work. I didn't know that. I was even there. I mean, I can't learn everything about the country when I'm there, but, um, yeah, I did not know that. It's a very iconic mountain here. And so um, communities are named after it and products are named after it. There we go. So there is my second row. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I know I need five and a half inches by ten and a half inches. I'm going to move it up and go as top close to the top as possible. The key thing for me with this block is that I don't want to cut off any of the peaks. I get the peaks of my rainbows. These peaks, these aren't peaks, these are valleys. They're going to get flattened out. That's fine. Um, Cause that's not the point. The peaks are the point. 
Oh, I just made a pun and I didn't even try to. Oi, oi, oi. Getting squirrely with this weather, maybe. There we go. So there is my second row. Right? In my original block, this is how I have it laid out. I could have it go sideways. I could play around and do it like this as well. Um, that's another way to do it. I am kind of thinking of a different block that may fit in this realm. So I'm actually going to go back to my original and just go this way. And so maybe we go, it's the three peaks with Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> in which case, maybe it should be that way, but it would be kind of funny. But I'm just going to go standard on this one because I like the way it looks. So I'm going to sew this last seam. I'm just going to watch my seam allowances. Take my time. Make sure I don't flip anything that I don't want flipped. And then press that last seam. Um, in this case, while I am typically a press to the side person, so just trip over the dog's bone. He left, but he left the bone. Um, I'm typically a press to the side person, but because there's a lot of interacting seams here, I am going to press open um, in this case. So press it flat to set that seam and then just a quick press open. There we go. Perfect. One nice final press and let's, oops, just my leaky iron leaked on the block. But there she is. Peaks, let's call her. With the side inspiration of the three sisters in the northern and the southern hemisphere. <laughs> oh, we're silly sometimes. I love it. Just the way we should be. Let's flip you around. Hello, and I'm going to put her on the wall. And there you have it. I haven't actually pieced together the previous rows. I still have all the blocks. I need to piece them together. That's because I put my this stuff on my design wall. Um, and so I had taken everything down and I just haven't pieced it. There they are. <laughs> so they're sitting there because I have this play on the design wall. Very different. I love working with different things right? Um, much more simple over here and kind of energetic, even chaotic, but I'm finding the order in it. So folks, that is week 15 of the Quilter's Placation Adventure Sew Along. Before I sign off today, I would just leave it open for any more questions if you've got them. Um, it is April 16th. We are on the third row of our 49 blocks to make up this rainbow edition of the Quilter's Placation Adventure So Along. I'm having a great time. I hope you're having a great time. I won't lie, this is a bright spot for me on some stressful times. Life is just a little bit, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> life is just a bit much of life right now. So be it, whose isn't, right? Whose isn't? Um, so I love knowing that I get to come here every week and be with you. I love knowing that I get to give this to all of you. And I love seeing you take your own time to create when you share it um, online. And even if you're not sharing it, even if you're not making, but you're just coming and hanging out, I love that you're doing that too. Um, so thanks, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. If you do make and share it, do not hesitate to tag me or to use the hashtags um, Quilters Placation, Quilters Placation 2020, or QP Adventure So Along and QP Adventure So Along 2024, or all three, um, so that I can see them and other people can see them too. 
feel free to share the link on YouTube or here on Instagram. I know everybody has their preferences for where they watch it, and I'm glad we can do both um, for you. So folks, I am Cheryl Arkison, your host here on this Adventure So Along. Um, have a great day. Take care, everybody.